Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleave, and today I'd like to talk about tabletop tripods and perhaps uh, a homemade variation that you might want to consider building for yourself. So stay tuned. A couple weeks ago, I got this idea that I was going to take this little tripod right here, which I've had for maybe close to 20 years, I don't know. It's been well over a decade, but this is called an Ultrapod. And it's a little plastic tripod. Um, it has a ball head uh, with a knob and there's a camera mounting plate that's a universal ball head and it's not on the tripod right now because it's on the homemade tripod I just made. But, so this little folding tripod is very compact, lightweight, and it's pretty rigid. It has two legs that fold out from the main leg and it makes a little short tripod with a wide stance. And the thing that I liked about it was the simplicity of the way the legs folded out. So the main leg of this tripod is a 90 degree angle shaped leg. And it has two other minor legs or secondary legs that fold out from the primary one. And they fold out at an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, And when they're completely folded out at 90 degrees, it makes a equilateral triangle uh, arrangement of the feet. Okay, so it's kind of a short, wide stance, little handheld tripod, but it's very stable. Um, conversely, if you have something like this tripod, which is, these are a lot more popular these days, with especially video makers. Um, it's almost like the de facto video making tripod anymore, is the Joby Gorilla Pod. The thing with the Gorilla Pod, it's very universal. You can flex the legs, all these little universal joints. You can, you can conform it to just about any kind of a situation, but it's kind of fiddly and it's kind of bulky a little bit, but it's, a, it's an okay tripod, but it's not quite as easy to use, just to grab and use as the little Ultrapod, but the limitation to the Ultrapod is it's a little short. It's not as tall as this style uh, size of Joby Gorilla Pod. So I was thinking that maybe I could perhaps make uh, my own version of this a little bit bigger and maybe it might work. So let me show you what I did. Well, one of the principal features of the Ultrapod was this main leg that has a 90 degree angle to it. And I thought because most uh, materials you buy at the hardware stores and craft stores have a 90 degree angle to them, obviously. Everything is orthographic, if you will. That I would uh, start by trying to make a main leg that's 90 degree angles. And so what I, what I come up with for this tripod was I had some, I found some three quarter inch um, poplar, which is this main leg right here. And I mounted some quarter inch thick pieces of oak to that poplar stick uh, so it makes that 90 degree angle and then I made this head that sort of connects everything together and provides a mounting point for the ball head and it also these two brackets now provide the the place that you can pivot the secondary leg so the primary leg is made of a three quarter inch poplar the secondary legs are 5 8 inch poplar and they hinge on top of these uh, on off of these quarter inch thick pieces of uh, oak so you have your 90 degree angle right there and so the legs fold out like that and like that okay so one of the things about the ultrapod design is that because the primary leg is at 90 degrees and that means that in order for the feet to get an equilateral stance, you have to fold the legs out, the secondary legs out, to 90 degrees also. So whatever this angle is, these have to fold out to the same angle in order to make it equilateral. Well, when I made my initial design of this tripod, um, I discovered that in order to fold the feet out far enough, the secondary legs, to get 90 degrees, it ended up having way too wide of a stance. And so I had to try to figure out a way of getting around that. I wanted a little bit more of a kind of a 60 degree uh, stance. I wanted the, the tripod to look a little bit more like an equilateral triangle um, 
on the sides, maybe like a pyramid shape, right? But the problem is, of course, that this head up here with this 90 degree bracket doesn't really permit you to do that and still have an equilateral stance on the legs. And so what I discovered was that I shortened the main leg. The main leg, I shortened it a little bit and it produces this kind of a stance that's, it's an obtuse triangle, I guess. This leg here is longer than the other two legs. Um, but, but by making the main leg a little shorter than the other ones, it moves the center of gravity back more towards the middle of the triangle, so it's actually stable. Okay, that was, so that was the first problem that I f solved with this design. The second problem was locking the legs. So the leg joints are using nylon, nylock locking nuts um, to connect the, the legs to this 90 degree bracket. And also the way I had built this, the hinge point for the secondary legs, there's no real place to stop it at 90 degrees like the way the ultrapod works where when you fold the leg up the bracket stops it at 90 degrees to make a perfect angle. I, I didn't have the luxury of being able to easily do that with this design and so I ended up employing a method that I had used in my two previous tripods which was to use this loop of string and it looks kind of funny and hokey but you know it works really well so let's talk about that. Years ago, I'm thinking it's close to almost 20 years ago, I had made my first homemade tripod, a big tall thing, which I think I showed you on a previous video. And in an attempt to stabilize the legs, th this big huge tripod was used for big heavy wooden box cameras, and it, so it needed to support a lot of weight, and they were pinhole cameras, so the camera on the tripod had to be very stable and not shake and move around during the multi-seconds long exposure. And so uh, what I ended up employing was this way of stabilizing the legs using a loop of string or cable. And I've, I've used the same method here with this tabletop tripod as a way of stabilizing these joints up here um, so that um, you don't have to rely upon heavy hardware, nuts, uh, friction, and all that stuff you're really relying upon the geometry of the design to stabilize the leg. Uh, so you have screw eyes in, in the bottom third of the leg, of each leg, and there is simply a loop of, in this case, heavy nylon string. And the length of the string has been uh, adjusted so that I, it gets the proper stance that I want on the tripod when it's stretched out. And the thing about it is the more weight that you put down on the top of the tripod, the more tension there is on the string and it makes the whole tripod more rigid. Um, and so I didn't really understand at the time I first made this what kind of a structure this was, but I went back in my library and back when I was a young man, I got interested in Buckminster Fuller and the geodesic domes and some of the uh, systems and structures that he had invented and pioneered. And one of the things that he invented was this thing called tensegrity. And this is a book by Anthony Pugh, which was one of, who was one of the uh, contemporaries of, of Fuller. And uh, this idea of tensegrity is, it stands for tensional integrity, but these are structures kind of like that, which are discrete compression members, like sticks, with discrete tension members, wires or strings. And the sticks or the compression members are able to resist the compression loads on a system, whereas the tension members are able to take up all the tension forces on the system. And by, by distributing those forces separately into discrete components, you end up with a system that's very resilient and strong and lightweight. And I didn't realize at the time, but when I did it, I first made this tripod, but this this wire loop or string loop system on the leg of this tripod is really a tensegrity structure. So this is kind of a tabletop tensegrity tripod. It employs c discrete compression uh, members and then it has this discrete tension member that actually stabilizes the system into a tetrahedron, which is the most basic uh, geometric solid. 
And the important thing about this design, though, is that it relies upon geometry to stabilize the tripod instead of, instead of relying upon very um, strong, beefy, overweight joints, which is how most tripods are stabilized. It's in all having really heavy, massive, strong joint components uh, up here on the pivot head. Um, instead of that, it's relying simply upon the geometry of the tetrahedron and the, ten the tensegrity structure itself for stability. So, so it's not an equilateral triangle. The side toward you between these two front legs is wider than the two back ones, but because I've shortened the main leg back here, it puts, it moves the center of gravity back toward the middle of the triangle. And so I can use my heavy uh, Panasonic GH3 camera on this tripod now, and it, it gives it a really a very sturdy stance on the table. And it, it gives me the ability to, um, at a, with a normal height of chair, this chair I'm sitting at is a little low, but a normal height chair to a normal height table, it puts the camera um, on this tripod right about eye level. So uh, it's really ideal for shooting video on a table situation. And so the thing about this tripod now is I can fold the legs down and I can use it as a selfie tripod, if I will, kind of like what I wanted to do with the UltraPod, but it's, it's longer now. It gives me more reach. Um, and as far as the weight of it, <laughs> with the ball head, this thing weighs 12 ounces. Yes, 12 ounces. Much lighter than that Joby GorillaPod I showed you that we're using right now on the camera. Uh, and this is, a, this is a much more stable design of, of a tripod. Um, now granted, it doesn't telescope down and it's not as flexible as the Joby GorillaPod, but dang, this thing is very, uh, very strong and lightweight and rigid. So this is the tabletop tensegrity tripod, and I recommend you guys make one of these yourself. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve. Have yourselves a good day.